In this video, we're going to take a look at what's going on with the DXY, and then we're going to focus primarily on gold, silver, and Bitcoin, and also GBTC. Um, and so we'll start off with the DXY. We've had, uh, if we go to our daily uh, time, um, ever since we kind of were at the beginning of the new year, right here on January 6th is where we've had the low. Um, we kind of were going sideways and then we've been on a little bit of an increase. And now the DXY is at a really important level right now for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we've got a pretty important um, overhead horizontal resistance that we poked above for a minute and now we're back down below um, in this little sideways channel. Um, and I'll, let me just show you if I go to the three day, um, this resistance and support line um, are also uh, back here in 2018 as well. Um, and uh, so I want you to see that, you know, getting above is really important. Getting back above, I should say, is really important for the DXY um, in terms of uh, long term trends, but also staying above this. Uh, ascending trend line because if you go back um, we've been on uh, in this slow ascending or this long ascending channel uh, these two lines are cloned trend lines um, so we've been inside this channel we've poked down below uh, ever since 2006 um, and so it's a long term ascending channel and so it's going to be important uh, for the DXY going forward to be able to stay in this channel. If we break down below again, um, then this, then these two, this uh, this sort of channel right here becomes much more important. Um, we might bounce around in there a little bit. We might get, uh, we might bounce off of this support and then come back above um, this resistance line and then. If we do that, I think we're going to be continuing the resumption upward on the DXY. But you have to remember that half the DXY is weighted towards the euro. And so um, it's the, the, you have to remember that even though the purchasing power of the dollar is decreasing, um, its strength relative to other currencies could be increasing. And that's kind of what the DXY is supposed to measure is its strength relative to other currencies, not necessarily its purchasing power. Um, so uh, let's go take a look at gold and silver first. Um, so my chart's really messy. I apologize. Um, we've got this, you know, descending channel that we've been in ever since uh, the top that we hit in August of last year, um, and we've been kind of bouncing around. Uh, we hit, we bounced off this support at 1675 twice now, um, and so it's possible that this could be a bottom. Now I've been on record as saying that I think that we have further downside to go. Um, I have this green box, which I've talked a lot about in previous videos. Um, but what I think is really important is let me go to a shorter time frame. Um, in a couple of our sessions since this most recent bounce. Um, it came up and poked above uh, this resistance at 1746, um, just like it attempted to do back in mid-March, but it failed to, to stay above it. The, the breakout of that resistance failed. We came back below, retested this, uh, what I'm saying is kind of a prime descending trend line if you follow the crosshairs going all the way down. We're retesting that. Uh, we bounced off of that line. And then we just tried to come up above that resistance again, and we're kind of being rejected. So it'll be interesting to see uh, where we close at in 37 minutes. Um, by the time this video gets posted, we might actually be past that. Um, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens with gold. Um, I suspected, like I said, that I thought that we were going to come down into my green buy zone, which is in this big green box. If I uh, come to a um, larger time frame, you can see my green box right here. This is my buy zone. I'll come back down to the daily chart. Um, but I also said that how we get there and, and what this looks like could change over time. So we could bounce around in this horizontal channel for a little bit. 
we could bounce above and then come below. Uh, we might follow this descending trend line. It's really messy, I apologize. Uh, we might follow this descending trend line downward. Um, I don't really know. I mean, who's to say we might actually, you know, we might actually have hit a bottom here. Um, I don't think a lot of people are saying that this is the make it or break it spot for gold. I actually don't think so. Um, I think that spot would be more at the 1547 if it were able to get that low. I don't think it'll get all the way down to that level. Um, but if it did, that's where I would start to be concerned about gold in the long run. Um, I do want to explain uh, what this ascending trend line is right here. I'll have to go back to my larger time frame again. Um, I've got a series of ascending trend lines that are cloned um, that have basically come from uh, the uh, the low back in 2015 um, and you can see how a couple of these trend lines have matched up and become support and or resistance at various times. So just wanted to explain that because um, we're also bouncing at the confluence of those two trend lines. Um, we've got that ascending long-term trend line from the low. Um, we've got this descending trend line from the high. And we've got that confluence right here, and it's kind of bouncing perfectly off of that. Like you can see, it's it's perfect. These trend lines have been there for a long time. Um, so, uh, and then given where we are at with the horizontal uh, support and resistance, I think this is a perfect zone. Um, and uh, it could hold. Uh, the question is, which one is going to hold? Um, I would say, you know, given what price action is telling me, um, maybe it seems that this ascending trend line is actually going to hold and will kind of bounce along this trend line um, but who really knows um, price action over the next couple of days and, and in the weeks ahead will tell us um, look at silver uh, in silver we came above this descending trend line we tested it uh, a couple of times and now we're resuming up we're also above this horizontal resistance for me personally um, if you want to take that if you're trading if you want to take that then we've got a resumption right here. We've got the higher high um, so uh, from the previous price bar, so that might be um, a good spot to get in. But for me, it's not until we get above 26.36 where things are starting to look a lot better uh, to me. Um, and of course, what's going on with silver uh, is connected to what's going on with gold. Um, let's take a look at the gold to silver ratio. Um, ever since uh, here in March, which was kind of the panic sell-off. Um, we've seen silver outperforming gold other than a couple of instances. So we've got, you know, a period of, you know, consolidation this way, uh, another one that's back here and back here. Um, so this is clearly a precious metals and commodities bull market. Um, and so uh, I think what I want to look at down here, I've got this bear flag, just kind of like I showed up there. Um, I think if the gold to silver ratio drops below, um, you know, and may maybe we can move this up a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm keeping it right here because I want to be more certain of my trend line here. Um, if we drop below, if we break down and then retest this trend line and then resume down, um, then it's game on. Um, and I think that gold and silver, that'll be the indicator that gold and silver are both on their way up. Um, uh, but obviously uh, it remains to be seen as long as it's in this ascending channel, this uh, or this uh, bear flag, this consolidation, gold is gonna outperform um, silver. Um, even though today you see that um, silver is actually outperforming gold. Um, now, the thing to remember is going back to the DXY, um, remember that commodities are priced in the U.S. dollar. Oil priced in the U.S. dollar, gold, silver priced in the U.S. dollar. So the DXY is a really good metric. As long as the DXY is falling, um, then you know it seems that gold and silver will be will will be inversely correlated to that. Um, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin today uh, has broken up above. I'll go to an eight-hour here. Has broken up above its most recent all-time high and is now in price discovery. Um, it looks like it was coming down to try to retest. I've got this blue uh, ascending trend line that comes from the, um, basically the, uh, if we go all the way back here, 
Um, it's a cloned trend line from um, when the bull market started um, and it's been cloned all the way up and it's provided a pretty good uh, you know, support and resistance at times. And I've also got this horizontal support which was uh, formerly resistance at the all time high and was broken above. Um, so just to give you an idea of where I'm, what I'm looking at with Bitcoin, um, I've moved my boxes because we've broken a new all time high. Um, I don't expect uh, a 30 to 40% pullback for a little while. Um, my base target here before I start looking for that will be about, um, you know, what is this? About 76,300. That'll be the base of where I'll be start. I'll starting. I'll be starting to look for a, a longer pullback. And so my green box here coincides with a 30 to 40% pullback from the bottom of this red box. Um, but obviously, 100% uh, or I'm sorry, 50% to 200% gains can happen once Bitcoin reaches these new all-time highs. Um, so the top of that could be over 100,000. Um, and the average time span that it takes for this to unfold is often somewhere between 25 to 40 days. So that's why I've got this box uh, positioned as such because I'm expecting um, the next um, the next peak to uh, happen as early as potentially um, you know the middle of April, if not the end. Of, I'm sorry, not the middle of April. The end of April. I actually have to move this box over a little bit um, here uh, towards the end of April. Um, and so uh, no guarantees, but that's kind of where I'm looking. Um, and then. To go to what do I want to go to, I want to go to GBTC here. Um, now that and my my GBTC chart is all messed up, I've been doing a lot of work on that. Um, once uh, now that we're into price discovery on Bitcoin, um, to me, I think that GBTC after I mean there hasn't been a whole lot of of upward movement from this high, uh, which was back in January. It's been mostly sideways, consolidating sideways. So I think that this next move we're gonna see on GBTC is gonna be a 100% move. Um, so is it gonna be 100% from this high at 48 or is it gonna be from this high at 58? I'm not sure. Um, so I'm looking at sometime in the next 30 days, GBTC um, being priced around 90 to $100 per share. Um, so a lot of things about that could change depending on um, what's going on, um, depending on the, how the premium versus the discount works, um, any other, um, ET, uh, not ETFs, any other funds that are tracking Bitcoin. You know, Grayscale is not the only one in the game anymore, so that might affect things. Um, but that's what I'm looking at going forward uh, over the next 30 days or so. We'll see. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, have a great day.